want to take a seat, I'll bring them over. Okay, boys. Oi, Gino. No, 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 no. Dino. This coffee. What about it? Needs more sugar. Hey, knock it off! Is he talking to me? Now there's a suspicious looking character if ever I saw one. What do you reckon? Laura Tomb with intent. Definitely worth pulling in, I'd say. What's your game? Oh, it's you, is it? What are you up to? Well, if you must know, I'm waiting for Mrs. Ventress. Rope you in for a bit of shopping, I shall. If only that was all. Still, I can't talk forever. You two gents will excuse me. Do you get the impression he couldn't get away from us quick enough? Yeah. He must be up to something. I bet you're going to find out what. See you later, Nick. Control to Delta Alpha 2-4. Over. Control to Delta Alpha 2-4. Over. Go to Alpha 2 for the control. They seek him here. They seek him there. His clothes are loud, but never square. It will make or break him, so he's got to buy the best. Cause he's a dedicated follower of fashion. And when he does his little round. Round the boutiques of London town Eagerly pursuing all the latest fads and trends Cause he's a dedicated follower of fashion Oh yes he is Oh yes he is Oh yes he is Oh yes he is He thinks he is a flower to be looked at And it's raked up, take she feels a dedicated follower of fashion. Mr. Ward, I presume. Reggie Rawlins. And this will be the lovely Gina, will it? Should we know you? No, I wouldn't have thought so. But I make a point of doing my homework on all potential customers. Customers? Let me ask you a question, George. I can call you George, can't I? What is it, eh, that pulls the punters into pubs these days? The beer. The beer. Music, George. The food of love. I've been telling them that for ages. What, you mean groups? That sort of thing. We can't afford out like that. You no longer have to, thanks to the white heat of modern technology. An up-to-the-minute, state-of-the-art jukebox. That's what you have a burning need of in here, folks. You can say that again. Gets more like a chapel address by the minute in this place. You're flogging these, are you? Not flogging, George. Leasing. And at rates that are laughably low. In fact, I'll be honest with you, I sometimes wonder how I make it pay at all. Can you describe them? Well, big, you know. And like I said, bikers, obviously. Was there an argument? No. They just say something about the coffee and then... Well, why do people do such things, eh? Just imagine. 
Having one over there in that corner, George. Aye, and just imagine the state my head'll be in with pop music blaring out all day. Not all day. Only when people put money in. 50% of which will be coming to you, of course, George. 50%? Plus the fact that once word gets round, you'll have every youngster in Aidensfield here. And they're the ones with the money to spend. And it'll help with the bigger rent. I'm telling you, George, having a jukebox in your pub these days is like having a licence to print money. It's a bit early in the day for this kind of nonsense, isn't it, Rowan? Well, it depends if you're looking for travel stars, which these two obviously were. Did he manage to get the number of the bikes they were riding? Uh, no. Oh, terrific. Sarge! What? An Inspector Hackett called to see you. Les Hackett? What did he want? Says he'll call back. Right. Who's Inspector Hackett? Better known as Hacker Hackett. The one the Chief Constable calls when he wants some dirty work doing. Now, oh, Reggie! <laughs> I thought I recognised that voice. Claude! I thought you were dead! <laughs> You old reprobate. Uh, it's just a rumour I put about the people I owe money. <laughs> <laughs> make it as usual, please, Gina. Yeah, make it a big one. I tell you, in this jukebox game now, are you? Music is the growth industry now, Claude. This is the swinging 60s, right? Yeah. Right, cheers. All the very best to you, me old mate. Ah, oh, that's smashing, George, smashing. Uh, it'll be here and installed before the day's out. Right. Ready. Come on, come on, see Yeah. I suppose you'd, uh, you'd like to get your boxes in all the pubs in the area, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's the idea. Uh, well, I, I might be able to be a bit of help. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, Claude, but you don't strike me as the sort who knows much about the pop scene, to be honest. I know, uh, know a lot about pubs. Well, that's true, of course, and I will need a Johnny on the spot. You'll have to throw in transport as well. Oh, got that. We can use the lorry. Right. What about storage space? Oh, got that. Use the cottage. Right. But I shall need some wages. You got them? It's a long time since you and me were on patrol together, Oscar. <laughs> More years than I care to remember, Liz. You ever think about what comes next? Well, I think maybe I've left it a bit too late for a promotion. Promotion? I was thinking more in terms of retirement. Well, I must admit, it's not uh, something I've thought about yet. Oh, but you should. I mean, you do reach a point, don't you, when, uh, well, you're just going through the motions. You find that, do you, Liz? Well, don't we all? If we're being completely honest with ourselves. And it just isn't good enough, Oscar. Not for you, not for the service. In fact, it is the first indication that you need to start seriously considering your future. I see. Room must be made, Oscar, for these young Turks snapping at our aging heels. Yes, I suppose so. Trouble is, we never think anybody's taking any notice, you see. Only the trouble is, somebody up there always is. So is it better to jump? Or be pushed. Come on, Alf. Put us out of our misery. Out what? The topper and tails job this morning. Well, if you must know, our Gail's getting married on the weekend. Oh, well, I thought she was in Cardiff being a nurse or something. Mm, she is, but she's back with an engagement ring on her finger. Hey, she's not, uh, <whistles> is she? Certainly not. So what's the problem, then? Well, you're not paying for it all, are you? Oh, I see. Ah, uh, gonna be a knife and fork job, then. Well, it was going to be a quiet family affair. Then Mrs Ventress found out the lad had got a hyphen in his name. Now she wants me to get a tent. A tent? Oh, Marquis. Oh, it can't be easy, Nick, being a father and a born skinflint. Right, sir. Soon, I hope.
Well? Short of calls to make, are we? Complaints to follow up? And is there such a deathly hush come over Aidan's field that you feel the need to come over here for company ruin? Just leaving, sir. <laughs> what kind of an impression do you think we gave Inspector Ackett? When are you lot going to start pulling your fingers out? Evening. Hiya, Nick. Hello, Nick. What's going on? Oh, it's what's called dragging George kicking and screaming into the 20th century. According to Dina. <laughs> Ta. Thanks. Hello. Hello, Nick. I didn't expect to see you here. How are you? I'm all right. You? Yeah, you're yeah, fine. Good. Should we go and sit down, then? Yeah. All right. Excuse us. Pints of bitter, Nick? Uh, just a uh, half, please, Gina. I'm probably not stopping. Right then, what do you fancy, ladies and gentlemen? The Stones, Jefferson Airplane, Procol Harum. Have you got a Jimmy Shan record? If he hasn't, he puts it on, he'll have me to deal with. Put the swinging blue jeans on, please, Reggie. OK, one swinging blue jeans number coming right up. Oh, good! <laughs> you won't get your hands in your pockets. You know you wait for the sun to finish before you can book another one. Well, perhaps you could start us off, Cole. You'll be lucky. What not you do? Come here, Johnny. I'll pull it in. Go on. Come on, Nick. Let's cheer them on with the eh? Sorry, Gina, I have to go. Another time. I believe it's all over with you two. Well, it is. You seem so right together. What went wrong? I don't know. We arranged to go away together. Then at the last minute, Nick backs out. Why? He said he was needed at the station. <laughs> you really can't blame him for having to work long hours. It goes with the territory, doesn't it? I know that. But this wasn't just about work. I think he was using it as an excuse. An excuse for what? To get out of it. He doesn't want to commit himself. Are you sure you're not overreacting? He was so happy with Kate. It's highly surprising that he's having second thoughts about getting too involved again. Give it time. If he's having serious doubts, I'd rather get out now. You're scared of getting hurt? It's happened before. <laughs> You're back soon. Yeah, I thought I'd have an early night. No good company in the pub then? Yeah, well, Maggie was there with Joe. Girls night out, apparently. Nick, if you want to tell me to mind my own business, feel free to. But if you and Joe split up? Yeah, looks like it. Well, I suppose if you're not right for each other, it's better to find out sooner rather than later, but... Why? Well, I think she suddenly realised what going out with the policeman involved. <laughs> right, got the keys. Yeah. In that case, I'll go and see if I can press another machine. Right. Hey! Just drive carefully. This is a very valuable antique. Bit like you, eh, Claude? Come for a drink, or come to empty the jukebox. You've come to empty it? Yeah. No, you're a bit previous. I mean, there can't be more than two quid in there yet. Two quid? Well, it hasn't been in 24 hours. 
I better check it in here. As long as you remember that 50% of what you find's mine. Only 50%? If I had my way, I'll get you off. Why, though? Why what? Well, why do I have to pay for everything? Just because I'm the father of the bride. It's what's called tradition, Alf. Have you any idea how much it's cost me to rent that tent? And I had to pay them in advance. Put another record on, Alf. That one's worn through to the B-side. But it's unfair, isn't it? I mean, his family could buy and sell me. Well, it could be worse, you know, Alf. If this was the Middle Ages, you'd have to come up with four cows and a goat just to get him to take her off your hands. Of them. Why did I ever talk you into getting that stupid jukebox? Did you get a look at their faces, George? Not really. It happened all too quick. You ought to see a doctor straight away, Nick. He's in shock. Well, we'll talk later, George. All right. Come on, George. I'll drive you round there myself. Mm. I'll come with you. Believe it. That's a third of my livelihood gone. Don't you mean a sixth? Who's done it? Well, I was hoping one of you could tell me that. Well, how should we know? Have you received any threats? No. Did you supply a jukebox to Dino's Diner? I've never even heard of Dino's Diner. Well, if you can think of anyone who might have it in for you, then let me know. Eh? Well, I certainly will. Are you sure you don't know who's done it? I haven't a blind idea. I wish I had. I wouldn't mind a word of them myself. No, the claim on the insurance. Why? Oh, and which insurance would that be, then? Don't tell me you're not insured. That jukebox in there hasn't been paid for yet. None of them have. Now, it has to be the same two blokes, Sarge. Too much of a coincidence not to be. But why should they take it into their heads to smash up two completely unconnected sets of premises? Well, they had the jukeboxes in common. Oh, you think they were the targets, do you? Well, they took the biggest hammering in both cases, son. Well, don't just stand there. Find out. We're not paid to speculate. Inspector Ackett wants results. Right, Sarge. Uh, about tonight's relief, Sarge. Can I swap with Bellamy? Well, if it's all right with him. Ah, thanks, Sarge. Ventress. Special occasion, is it? Oh, it's a stag party for my future son-in-law. Oh, well, I trust you'll warn him. If he isn't careful, he could end up at the end of it, trouserless, on the night train to Glasgow, with a severe case of alcoholic poisoning. That's one of the reasons I'm going, Sarge, to make sure that none of those uh, shenanigans are going on. Mrs Ventress insisted on it. A very wise woman, Mrs Ventress, obviously. Yes, Sarge. So we can definitely put you down for one then, Bertha. As long as it's clearly understood that if my regulars don't take to it, you'll take it out again. Have it in for a couple of weeks, it'd be like the Warren in here. The what? 
The Warren! You know that place in Liverpool where all the pop groups go? All that. Now, if you just sign here on the dotted line, please, love. Fancy you knowing about the Warren? Uh, I'm not just a pretty face. <laughs> Obviously not, Claude. Obviously not. Well, that was quick. You like it, huh? Yeah, yeah. A big improvement on the last one, huh? Well, I only saw the wreckage. Is that the name of the supplier, L.E.W.? Yeah. Live Entertainment or Whitby. Very good people. Well, they must have been a bit upset about the last one. Well, not really. Uh, they didn't supply it. So what happened to the other people? They went bust. I mean, when I tell them what's up, they don't even bother to come around. Have you still got a dress for them? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so what you have to ask yourself is this, Derek. Is it worth poisoning yourself before the most important day of your life? Now, be careful, Mr Ventress. Hey, that's handsome, that. So when they try and force it on you, just say no. <laughs> One of bat and tongue of dog. This should see him right. I promised Gail I'd look after you tonight, son. Here we are then. Cheers, Mr. Ventress. Oh, thank you very much. Cheers, son. Cheers. I understand you supplied a jukebox to Dino's Diner. Yep, that's right. You know it was smashed up a couple of days ago. Yeah. Dino phoned me about it. You didn't make a fuss? Well, what's the point? I'm out of the jukebox game now. Well out of it. You found there's a better living in this sort of thing, eh? No. I just found that I couldn't compete with the big boys. And who would the big boys be? Well, there's only one big boy in this neck of the woods, Constable. Is that a firm called L.E.W.? That's the one. South of France. Which reminds me, talking of accommodation, there won't be a spare bed at your place. You'll be there for a few days, like. Only it seems silly wasting money on bed and breakfast bills. My, my place is a bit untidy at the moment. I've lost my housekeeper, but if you don't mind a bit of mess, you can sleep on the sofa. Of course, you have to come to some sort of financial arrangement. You're a hard man, Claude. Listen, I'm up back down the Edensfield Arms now. See if I can load that last jukebox on George. Are you coming or what? No, I'll stop here and keep my eye on things. I mean, we don't want any more trouble, do we? I'll see you back at the ranch then. All right. Now then, young man. Excuse me, what, what bit of change? There we go, Mr. Ventress. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah, all right, cheers for that, Charlie. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. What are you ringing with before? I was just seeing if they know anything about this jukebox firm, L.E.W. And? Do they? Yeah, it seems they're the only supplier in the area now. But we haven't had any reports of their machines being vandalised. Funny that. <laughs> Play me, Dick. No need to ask what sort of time he had. <laughs> Come on, Alf. Come on. Oh, that's it. Oh, some young swine makes me a bottle. A bottle or a barrel? Best get him home. Oh, no, 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 no. 
I can't go home. <laughs> Mrs. Ventress <clears throat> will kill me. He can't sleep here. That's a tolerant woman. Never has been a strong point. I know where we can put him. Uh... No thanks, Reggie. Not after today's experience. Yeah, but the black dog is packed. They're fighting to put money into the one I've just installed over there. You can't blame him, Reggie, for not wanting another one. Look, you mustn't let what happened put you off. I've seen the future. And it's full of pubs around here making a fortune. Cause they've had the good sense to take one of Reggie Rawlins' jukeboxes. Or talk to him, Gina, love. I'll try. Well, don't take too long, will you? Cause believe me, the demand for our stuff is growing practically by the hour. You should be doing this, you know it. Mrs. Ventress, hello. It's Philip here from Ash Vidley Police. Oh, were you? Oh, I'm sorry to ring so late. Only, uh, Alf asked me to call you. You see, there's been this emergency. It's an all-hands-on-deck job. And he says to say that he won't be home until tomorrow morning, at the earliest. A word with him? Well, I don't know about that, Mrs. Ventress. You see, he's, um, sort of... In communicado at present. My bird has lost its song. My right has turned to wrong. The dreams I dream mean nothing now. The life I knew before. What are you doing, Claude? I'm waiting for a bus. What does it look as if I'm doing? I thought you'd be over at the Black Dog by now, collecting our tech-ins from last night. What's all the rush? Because we need the money. Urgently. Now, come on, will you? I thought I was a partner. <sighs> Words fail. But you don't have a shred of evidence to suggest that these L.E.W. people are connected with what's been going on. By all accounts, they're a well-established firm. Which is more than can be said for this outfit that Greengrass has got himself involved with. Yeah, but if all the small fry in the area are being pressured out of business, L.E.W. are going to benefit. And how come none of their machines have been vandalised? There's only been two incidents of jukebox vandalism, and they may be completely unconnected. Well, it could be that only two have been reported, Sarge. What do you have in mind? Well, I think it's worth a trip over there, at least. Well, if they are involved, they're hardly likely to want to tell us about it, are they? Well, I could make out I was on business, collecting quotes. And what about Whitby CID's reaction when they discover you've been operating on their patch? Well, you would be winding your neck out just a bit, Sarge. I can understand your caution. I have been known to take the odd risk in my time, Rowan. We're not just about passing out parking tickets in Ashfordley, are we? No, no, of course not, Sarge. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. I, I, I'll try and sort it out. Yes, straight away. You know that uh, marquee that we had ordered for tomorrow? What about it? Well, the people we ordered it from, they haven't turned up. So, give them a ring. Well, Mrs Ventress just did. The line's unobtainable. Why, out of order? Disconnected, that's what the exchange said. 
Well, I've got an address for them. I'd best get round there and sort things out. Hey, but what if Blayton wants you? Uh, just tell him that something urgent's come up at home. Matter of life and death, mine. Trust me, Bertha. I don't. Right. Now, I've got to give you 40% of this, haven't I? 60? Come on. We both know it's 50. Then why did you offer me 40? Well, you never know your look. Hello, Ted. Hammer. First I've heard about it. How are you? Well, uh, hey, hey, if it's the money after it, it's not mine. It's, it's only a few coppers anyway. I mean, I'm just... I'm nearly an old-age pensioner. Oh, we ain't come to rob you, Ted. Thank you very much. Just to give you a message. For your boss, Reggie. Reggie's not my boss. Whatever he is, he's getting under the feet. <laughs> and people who get under our feet get trodden on. Hard. <laughs> Just tell him that for us. All right? Scare me. I will not let myself be intimidated by these people. Oh, very good. The only trouble is it's not you they're intimidating, is it? It's me. Just one more delivery, Claude, and then you get what's coming to you in wedges. And I can start paying off the bank. Right? Mr. Rowan? Yes, ma'am. Anita Setters. I'm managing director of LEW. This is Andy Farley, my business partner and senior sales director. You're the one who's planning on opening a cafe over Ashfordley Way, right, Mr. Rowan? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And considering taking one of our jukeboxes, I hope. Well, that's what I like to hear. You've been supplied with details of our current rates, have you, Mr. Rowan? I have, yes. So what do you think? Pretty competitive, considering the quality of our product. Well, not that competitive compared to what I've already been offered. Really? Do you know a, a Reggie Rawlins? Well, I can't say the name rings a bell. Is he new in the area? Yeah, just starting out, I think. You'd be surprised how many of them there are, Mr Rowan. And even more surprised to learn how many of them fall by the wayside, which is the main problem as far as the customer is concerned. How do you mean? Well, if something goes wrong with their equipment, which it usually does with these two-bit operators, they just haven't got the backup. Could sometimes be a week before they can replace it. But that doesn't happen with you. <laughs> If one of our machines should go on the blink, Mr. Rowan, you'll have another before the day's out, and that's a promise. So what do you think? Yeah, well, why don't I do that then? Just think about it. You'd be a fool if you didn't, Mr. Rowan. Can I keep these? Of course. Thank you. Not at all. Bye. Ah, don't worry, love. He'll be back. Where else is there to go? What's up with him? Go on if you're going. 
Get off, you lunatic! That's the two looks I was telling you about. What do you think you're playing at? Oh, go on. What are you, what are you doing? Gone for nothing. Is the wedding still on for tomorrow? Oh, I just about. I found a room in a pub for the reception. And a fat lot of thanks I got for that and all. Well, which pub? Um, well, you know the red line in Cemetery Road. Not quite what the in laws are used to, according to Mrs. Ventress. How did you get involved with these marquee people? Uh, well, a fancy brochure was stuck through the letterbox just after the engagement announcement was made in the paper. So that's how they're doing it? We were deliberately run off the road by this dirty great truck. Well, did you get the number? Hardly. I was a bit busy at the time, trying to save our flaming lives. Well, did either of you see who was driving? Two blokes who come up to me this morning outside the Black Dog. Inspector Hackett rang while you were out, Sarge. Well, he's not coming here, is he? You said he'd call later. Alf. Is it something you think about? Retirement? Oh, all the time. You mean you're looking forward to it? Well, we all. What? Ending up on some bowling green somewhere with all the other grey old men? My dear, you still have your family around you, don't you? Oh, there are drawbacks to everything, Sarge. He's in a good mood, is he? Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> For the last time, Rowan, we're not here to protect the business interests of Claude Greengrass and his mate. But well, they could have been killed, Sarge. We should be so lucky. Anyway, you still can't prove that L.E.W. had anything to do with this. Well, I think I could, Sarge, if you let me try something. Hello, Gina. Hi, Annie. Yeah, I want you to do me a favour. Well, in fact, two favours. Well, I will if I can. Well, firstly, how do you fancy getting engaged? Well, if that's a proposal and marriage, I've heard more romantic ones. Uh, not to me, to a Fred Smith. I've never even heard of a Fred Smith. Well, neither of the people who ripped off Alf. Now, all you have to do is let me put an advert in the evening post announcing your engagement. And then what? Well, then you may or may not get a brochure put through your door. Now, if you don't, then nothing's lost. But if you do, let me know, eh? So what's the second one? I want you to ring someone for me. These people. L.E.W.? Yeah, well, just tell them that you and George are interested in having one of their jukeboxes. I can't do that, Nick. My Uncle George said he definitely won't have another one near the place. But they don't know that, do they? Good to see you again, Oscar. How have you been? Oh, uh, never better, Les. Never better. Rude with health. Oh, good. But for how much longer, Oscar? I mean, that is the question we do have to ask ourselves when we get to our age. Remember our little chat the other day? Yes. Well, do you know the more I thought about it, the more it all made sense? Really? There's a moment in every man's life, Oscar, when it's time to call it a day. And I'm afraid, whether we like it or not, that moment has finally arrived. I see. That's the final decision, is it? It is. So, exactly three months today, it won't be Inspector Hackett any longer. It'll be just plain Mr. You... you mean... Enough's enough, Oscar. And I don't mind telling you now, it was being able to talk it through so frankly with an old and valued friend like you that finally made me realise I should retire. I 
wish you well, Les. I really wish you well. Hi. Hiya. Andy Farley, live entertainment at Whitby. We did say 12 o'clock, I think. We did, yeah. Now, my Uncle George has just popped out to the bank, but he won't be long, so do you want to take a seat while you're waiting? Fine. Would you like a drink? Yeah. I have a small whiskey, please. Right. Mr Farley, isn't it? Oh, hello. You read our literature yet? Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid that Reggie Rawlings and Claude Greengrass still seem to have the edge. Are they still working in this area? Yeah, going like a rocket. They've just taken delivery of a load of new jukeboxes this morning. Really? Yeah, all the latest models. When I saw what they had over at Greengrass's place, my decision was made. Oh, well. If anything should happen to change your mind, though, you know where to find us. Yeah, right, look. I better go. Time is money. I'll see. Got a phone I can use, have you, Levy? Yes. Just help yourself. Then, lads. Well, don't just sit there, lock that door. Go on. Officer, thank God there's something definitely going on down there. What, and you just happen to be passing? Mind your head. Oh, it's nice to win one for a change, eh, Sarge? It bears out what I told you. If you lot pull your fingers out a bit more often, there's no limit to what can be accomplished. It's not going to be easy to tie Farley in with all this. He claims he was just passing. Uh, he'll find himself some smart Alec lawyer, I suppose. Why don't I nip over to Whitby and have another word with his partner of his side? Good idea, Ron. Off you go. Oh, then, Blaketon. What do you want, Greengrass? Oh, I just wondered if there's any danger money for us. Danger money? Yeah, danger money for us putting our lives on the line for your lot. The only danger you've been in all day, Greengrass. Is the mortal danger you're in at this moment from me? It's a nice way to talk to the people who pay your wages. It's for the pick in this area now, eh, Claude? With LEW out of the frame. All we want is a swift injection of capital and then just watch our smoke. 
I don't suppose you'd be interested. You suppose right, Reggie. In fact, I've got a little bit of advice for you. Oh, I? What's that? I'm afraid most of it is rather obscene. I tell you, I know nothing of any intimidation. Look, Mrs. Setters, we already have your business partner down at the station. You didn't really think he'd carry the camera on this on his own, did you? What's he been saying? Well, what do you think? Uh, gallantry went out of fashion with King Arthur, right? Look, this whole business of burning off the small fry was his idea, not mine. I was against it from the start, made it clear that I was. But you went along with it just as long as no one asked you to get your hands dirty. You are familiar, are you, with the term accomplice? What have you been saying? Nothing. What have you been saying? Oh, you stupid. Alf? It's Nick. Yeah, had the wedding go. Oh, good. Yeah, look, can you meet me tomorrow morning at the Aidensfield Arms at 10 o'clock? Yeah, well, Gina's had a very interesting brochure pushed through her door. Hmm. Right, well, I'll see you then. Bye. Devious lotters, coppers. Yeah, with any luck, we'll have both these cases cleared up. Nick, is it true that the great romance with the lovely Joe is finished? I'm afraid it is, yeah. So does that mean that she's, uh, back on the market, then? Well, that's not quite the way I'd have put it, fellow. He's only kidding, mate. <laughs> You rang me about the brochure I left. I did, yes. Would you like to follow me? Thank you. Hello again. 